Welcome to Bigelow Woodcraft. I'm Jerry, and if this is the first time you've stopped by the channel, thanks for checking us out. Hopefully it's something you like, and uh, you'll have uh, the inclination to subscribe. But what we're doing today is we have a white oak, I'm sorry, a red oak on here, and it's a little over seven feet. I had to cut off some rot that was on this end, a bunch of ant holes, and I could not get that part of it through my mill. This mill, this Frontier OS 27, can cut a 27 inch log it cannot cut a 27 inch span though it only cuts 22 inches between the blade guides that's why i turned this up this way so this direction we're looking at 27 inches so i couldn't cut that at all in that direction i'd i'd have to lop off both sides so it's 27 inches tall but it's only it's uh oop, wrong direction <laughs> 19 wide there. It's very consistent, 19 on each side. So I'll be able to get that off. So the first slab, I'll just catch it and that this, take that slab off and then we'll start working our way down. What this guy wants, he wants two and a quarter inch slabs for benches. And he, he gave me the okay to, once I get to a point where he thinks it's too thin for a bench, he said to uh, make inch and a quarter out of it. Um, so that's what we'll do. Now we have three other logs. You may have seen these come in on that load the other day. We have three other logs over there. One is really rotten. One of them has a lot of shake through it. It goes all the way through it, it appears. And I'm, I don't know how many slabs he's gonna get out of that. So we're gonna see what we can get. So he wants two and a quarter, an inch and a quarter, and stickers. So we don't have a lot of lumber to work with, but we'll see what we can get so the mills warmed up um and we're ready to go so i'm going to open this thing up i got a brand new ripper 37 seven degree yeah seven degree blade i was thinking of 10 seven degree blade uh so i don't even want to use a, a sharpened one for this i know i'm going to be cutting through a lot of a lot of meat here so i thought i would uh put a brand new one on it looks good i got the bark off so it is clean little right there but i think we're good to go two and a quarter slabs i have the backstop set at six inches so i can go down to six inches and uh, might be the last slab we get off of it anyhow all right let's see how this goes <clears throat> this this is a homeowner's mill this isn't really a money-making mill you can make money with it it's it's just slow we don't have the horsepower like these wood misers or these cooks or something big like that or a big baker, you know, that's only a 13 and a half horse motor. So we have to cut this really slow at going this, this width. So it is a very capable mill though. And for making lumber for a homeowner and a few odd and end jobs, it's perfect, you know, and yeah, he could take this to somebody else. They all, most people charge a lot more than I charge and it would be done maybe a little quicker, but for the most part, it's going to be about the same price. Cause most, you know, the time they figure, you know, you run this on an LT 70, you'd have this done in a few minutes, but they'd charge you by the board foot then. So it mine works out to about 50 cents a board foot when it's all said and done milling with what I charge. All right. We're going to get this going and sit back and enjoy the show. For you new guys, this isn't your standard homeowner's mill. I did a lot of modifications to it. I have a power feed. I have an up-down power feed as well. I have a power feed for the uh, throttle as well. I wish I had a roller. I don't have that yet. One other thing. I forgot what I was going to say. This doesn't have two and a quarter scale or nine quarter scale. So I'll actually have to physically do it, take into account the curve for the blade at two and three eighths.
Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> All right, let's see what we have here. Another piece of that red oak. Can we get across it? <laughs> Keep getting on the side. Whew. It's right at 22. It's gonna be close. Worst comes the worst, I can come down to the center, then come back the other direction and get it. And I might have to do that. It is right at 22, right there. There's nothing sticking out though. I bet I can get it. I lost my reading glasses. Just had them. Look at the tractor. I ran them over. Since this mill doesn't have a nine quarter scale, I have to get up each time just so I can see two and three eighths on the scale. Normally I can see it from my chair, but see the eighth scale, I can't. All right, we have a 22 inch exactly uh, inside the bark. Six and a half foot long, another piece of that red oak, but we have this shake that goes through. So what do I do? I'm gonna come through and see if it goes all the way through. The other log, it started on the one end, but after about a foot, it was gone. So, I, and it does not show up on this end, the shake doesn't. So I'm hoping it ends somewhere in there, but you know what will happen? If it does go all the way through and he starts, once it dries, I suspect that a shake, this would fall out. That ripper is holding up really well.
that was kind of anticlimactic, the, the eclipse. It's actually starting to brighten up a little bit. Never got real dark here in West Michigan. Hey, we didn't get hit with any directed energy weapons. However, I noticed there hasn't been an airplane in the sky for quite a while. And we're right over the Chicago uh, O'Hare's flight path from like uh, Europe and that goes directly over our house. So anyhow, back to this. I, he doesn't have much here. I'm going to try to get some wood around the edge. And if I can't get it, his stickers, I will... Uh, I'll get a chunk of an old piece of one of my old logs and make them some oak stickers. So, twenty-five inches. Ooh, I'm sure it goes deeper than that. So, boy, this thing's a mess. So, I started thinking about this last night. I'm not going to charge this guy for this one. That's my job to, I should have said, no, this isn't even usable, but I'm going to cut it anyhow. This is going to be a freebie. Maybe I can still get the stickers out of it. And even if I do, I'm not going to charge him for it because I'm experimenting here. I'm going to just see what the hell I can do with this thing. So I kind of have the centers leveled well. <laughs> what I think is the centers. You know, this is a big bell. That side's, that side's 22 over there. Boy, that's almost 26, 20, 27 tall, 22 tall at that end. So I lifted that side up uh, an inch and a half, kind of tipped it up a little bit. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to maybe just cut a cant and see what the heck it looks like. Maybe I can get a cant with that hole at the center and then I can get a couple boards off of it. So he needs 36 stickers, four foot long to uh, sticker all them slabs I got them yesterday. I also need to show you my abstract clamping. When you have these big logs on here, you can't use these at all. These uh, log dogs at all. You can't dog them down with these because the handle will stick out. So I wedge them. Let me show you. Okay, I got a wedge there. A wedge there. And a wedge back there just to lock it all in. Now, there's some more shake. I have a little life left on that blade, so we're going to use this blade and get this done. So I demonstrated this once or twice a year about using a strap to roll your logs if your mill doesn't have hydraulics. So what I do is I wrap this uh, strap around it. Pull it back through. Go underneath to lock it. And this would be the one where my fork grabs. So I only have my log stop set at six inches. We'll see what, how it rolls. If I can get that bark off, I never thought of that. Well, it'll probably pop the bark off as it rolls. Let's see what happens. There we go.
Guys, this job is done. Some very nice live slabs in here. I got this one here so the customer can see that there's nothing else I can get out of it. What he wanted was two and a quarter slabs. He got a lot of those and he's using them for benches. So anywhere he thought, he said anywhere it's less than a, a width of a bench seat, make them an inch and a quarter. Well, after I cut the big slabs off, each one, there wasn't really anything left. So he did get a couple smaller ones, uh, one here, one here. When you're coming down in order, you know, sometimes you have to take off a thinner one unless you set it right at two and a quarter right from the get go. Um, you're always going to have a thin piece like that somewhere. He ended up with uh, six times 848 uh, stickers. 40 is what I calculated every two feet here. And these are six feet. Then he got some one buys that I used out of the sticker. So once I got the 40 some, I said, okay, he can have those rest. So there's one, two, three, six. There's eight one by, it looks like they're about one by fours, one inch thick. So thanks guys for sticking around with me. If you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. As a long video, I try to keep them below 15 minutes, but this was a big job and I wanted to take you along with it. This was a really ugly log. You know, we had some shake, but that shake didn't go all the way through but we had that rotten stump that shake went through that, that where it was, you know, rotted out to this one, to this one and stopped about a foot and a half up. So the length of that and that stem sat on top of that log right there. All right, guys, we'll see you at the mill next time. Take care. You have a great day.